Robotiers, and welcome to another adequate episode of Topless Kitchen. This month, we're doing an episode themed around the most exciting news to come out of Comic-Con. Jessica Alba and DC Vertigo have worked out a very fascinating licensing deal. Jessica Alba is going to be a character in the DCU who gets a Green Lantern ring and starts making more Green Lantern rings that she spreads amongst her celebrity friends, starting the Jessica Alba Corps. And because the comic is going to be written by Rail Latat Burger, we're going to be making Albacore Burgers. I hope you'll enjoy. With me as this time is my good friend James Oden. Hello. And he's the one who turned me on to Albacore Burgers, which are motherfucking awesome. And then we're going to take a look at all the ingredients that you'll need. Okay, so for starters, we got green onions. Fresh green onions, preferably. You can use dehydrated onion or uh, onion powder or whatever for the flavor. I, I like to use fresh ones. Uh, those little, if, for anybody who's never cut these before, probably not many of you, you'll note that there are fuzzy things on the end. Those are the roots. Cut those off. You don't need them. Um, two good-sized cloves of garlic. We have, of course, albacore. It's off-brand because it's cheap, but... Uh, you can get, pretty much use whatever kind you want. Just make Focus sure it's crack is over here. Yeah, just make sure it's in water, not oil. That's that's really important. Uh, we got salt. We got ground black pepper. We've got extra virgin olive oil. We've got mayo, eggs, Ritz. Gotta have Ritz. And, and it's the official brand because the generic brand was actually more expensive. Seriously. Broke ass crack ain't gonna spend more money for generic ass crack. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Of course, you need a knife, but that's not an ingredient, that's a tool. Um, we've got hamburger buns for afterwards. Now, James is going to get to the cutting, and I'm going to get out of his way. One can of uh, albacore equals one green onion. So we've got four cans, going to make eight burgers, so got four green onions. You can cut kind of large pieces. Uh, I personally like to, because I like the flavor of them. Other people may not necessarily like that, but I'm making them, damn it, I'm going to make them my way. Got the green onions chopped. This was an extra piece. See? Pile a little green onion. Then chop the garlic. Doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be super small garlic. You probably want a little, a little thinner. So I forgot an ingredient, everybody, and I apologize. Uh, whipped butter, sweet cream, and salt. Ah! Fine. And ah! salt. No, not dude. The butter exploded on me. I'm not putting that in the pan. Um, hate when that happens. So good, nice dollop of butter here. And smack it into the pan. Oh, come on. There Fuck you, butter! Yeah, I know, right? Okay, so, melting the butter down. And most people don't do this. In fact, I've heard some people, I've had some people yell at me in the past for doing this with some things. But now that the butter is melted, a tiny bit of the olive oil. What the fuck are you doing? See what I mean? Anyway. But no, seriously, what are you doing? Um, basically, I'm getting ready to toss the veggies in for a little bit and kind of brown them a bit. And personally, I like the way it comes out when you put a little bit of butter and a little bit of olive oil in. And that's different from other options, how? It just tastes a little different. I'm not really sure how to describe it. It's just a little different. So we drained the cans of albacore. Yeast. And we, we didn't bother filming that part because we kind of, you know... I assume people uh, know how to do that. Yeah, if you don't know how to do that, um, you need more instruction in cooking than I can give you in this video. Maybe with a couple years worth. So we have a pot because we do not have a bowl large enough at our disposal. And we have our four cans of albacore. So... We get, and no tuna will not work as a supplement. It just doesn't have the right consistency. Yeah, it's got to be albacore. Now that the albacore is in the pot, and uh, just pretend it's a large mixing bowl, you want to kind of break it down a bit because it's much more solid than uh, tuna is. Just use a fork for that. I mean, you could technically use your, you know, Brow ridge, but that would be painful. 
Or, or you could use your knuckles, but that that would also be, you know. Mm. Well, that'd just be messy. Yeah. It'd be you, your hand would feel, smell like albacore for a week. <laughs> yeah, and if you have cats around the house, uh, they, they just might decide to nibble on your fingers. That would be unfortunate. It would. And most likely painful, especially if the cat's young and it's like, oh, food. Okay, so that's broken up now. So next step is get another spoon. Grab the mayo, and you need to put a nice, healthy amount in there, otherwise it doesn't work. Now, the biggest issue with doing this that I've found whenever I do this is uh, moisture level of the, of the actual albacore mix once you're getting ready to cook it. So that's partially what the Ritz are for, because you want it to stick together, you don't want it to fall apart, but you don't want it to be too moist. You actually have to put a good number of rinse. I'm using about a half a pack for the four cans. So then you take and crush them, and hopefully they don't explode everywhere. I've had that happen before. And you don't want it to be like super powder, but you don't want it to be huge chunks either. Moderately sized bits would be a good way to put it. And then you mix that in, and it should become a very nice sticky mass of stuff. And I'm going to move the camera over just a little bit closer. As you can see, it clumps into chunks really well at yeah. this point. And that is how you start making the patties. Now, unlike hamburger patties, you cannot make the patties and stack them together. This does not work when you're doing this. Uh, <laughs> I've tried that before and they just kind of stick together because it's very adhesive to itself. Okay, so for the next part here, this is where the eggs come in that we grabbed. Uh, per two cans, one egg, that's a good one. I like to do one per can, but it's kind of eggy and it can be runny and kind of tricky to get it to stick together right now. So you just crack it directly into the mix, like so. Uh, you want to take that for me? And then there we go. So gotta break the yolks, obviously. And I mean, in theory, you could use egg whites instead. Egg whites would work. Uh, but basically, what this does is it helps it stay together once it's cooked. It becomes a non-crumbly mess. Check that shit out. Does that not look good enough that you would want to kick Dr. Doom in the crotch to get one of these? I think I just kicked him in the crotch on, on, on anyway, but all right. Now, if he's wearing his armor, I, I, I would need a special reason to kick him in the crotch. Oh, it's but, like for the shit that he pulled on Matt Murdock. That, that's crotch kick worthy. Okay, so now we're actually ready to start cooking. Hooray! We are going to use the same pan that we did the veggies in, and we're actually not taking the stuff out of the bottom. Okay, so this part can, for some people, is kind of like, eh, because you actually have to use your hands for it, unless you have something to like shape a burger patty. But we're going to go a little bit above medium heat, so four and a half on this one. Um, so, you got to get a good amount, not too much because you've got to leave it kind of available so you don't over, so you don't uh, put too many in. You want to get it into kind of a ball shape. And then you just, like that. Ta-da! Um, I'm going to be rinsing my hand. Once you uh, get it cooked up enough, it will end up fairly firm and actually flippable because of the egg that's in it. And it's important for something like this, make sure you wash your hands and also uh, avoid having the tuna stuff mixed in, uh, whatever bowl you use, don't just rinse that out and use it for something else, because cross-contamination can be a real motherfucking bitch kitty. It is to a point now where it will scoot around rather than try to fall apart. The reason I left the oil and butter remnants in there is one, it still has some of the flavor from the onions and garlic, so it actually will even it out a bit rather than just having 
the chunks have the flavor primarily. Um, so at this point, we're going to try to flip it. Now, this can be disastrous if you mess it up, and I'm not above messing it up, so please bear with me. That is the way you want it to look on the other side when you're done. Okay, so... I want to be seen to... James has made some delicious burgers for the whole crowd. I get some shots of everybody else eating, but they already finished them already. <laughs> and for tonight's drink to go with it, Bridgeport Trilogy 2 Aussie Salute IPA. I did not realize that beer can be in a trilogy. I did not see Trilogy 1 or Trilogy 3, but everybody knows that Part 2 is the best Always part. the best part, yeah. Part 3 is where it fails. Part 1 is kind of okay. Well, every now and then you get a Part 3 that's the best one of the bats, like Iron Man 3. Run. Just cut and run. No, cut and hobble. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Mm, goes well. Yeah, it tastes like a uh, post-apocalyptic skateboarder doing a kickflip on my tongue. And let's see what this tastes like. I have the sinking feeling he's going to just punch me in the face because it's that bad. <laughs> it tastes like a mermaid died so that I might enjoy my dinner.